As we get deeper into fall, distinguishing between seasonal illness and COVID-19 becomes more important. Now, one of the more serious fall illnesses that has many symptoms in common with COVID is RSV. It's a viral respiratory infection that mostly impacts children younger than two. So joining us now to talk about the signs and really what to look out for and what parents should do is Dr. Saman Salamani. Good morning, Dr. Salamani. Good morning. Well, you did mention that... Um, you know, the symptoms are similar to COVID-19. So what should we look out for? How can we tell the difference? Well, you know, RSV, um, as the acronym for respiratory sensational virus, um, is a virus that obviously has been around for a long time. We've been aware of it. And typically it acts like a common cold. It is a respiratory virus. And so because of that, many of the symptoms are pretty much identical to what a flu or COVID-19 would be. So from sore throat, cough, congestion, wheezing, um, any of those runny nose are all part of the parameters and the symptoms that come with RSV. Now, typically it does affect children younger than two, but it also can affect adults. And it's more serious, especially for adults that may have immunocompromised system, they may have chronic asthma or COPD, emphysema, other reasons of cardiovascular issues that may reduce the respiratory um, system, those can become a serious condition. For children, usually under 12 months, it's uh, much more serious. And with the presence of COVID-19, really the key factor is if somebody's coming down with symptoms, you really want to make sure whether it is flu, RSV, or COVID-19. And both all those three can be tested in an office setting to see whether you may be suffering from flu A, B, COVID-19, or RSV, because depending on which one of those three may be, it kind of changes the treatment parameters. Okay, so what are some of the treatments available? So for RSV, you know, typically for RSV, uh, it's kind of like if you, if you had to pick out of the three, it's probably the best one to have, I would say, out of the three, because treatments are supportive. Uh, so once you've ruled out that it is not influenza and not COVID-19, typically with RSV is just supportive care. Now, if someone is wheezing, you may want to give them steroids to reduce the inflammation in the lungs, um, obviously anti-inflammatories, antipyretics to reduce their fever, um, any kind of breathing treatments if they're having respiratory difficulty. But also sometimes uh, it happens with RSV and other respiratory viruses that because of the effects it has on the immune system, and your immune system is trying to fight that, it kind of leaves the door and sometimes it can lead to an actual bacterial respiratory infection like a pneumonia. And in those cases, depending on the presentation of the patients, sometimes even antibiotics are used, not necessarily to treat RSV, but the secondary infection that may come because of that. And we know a lot of these respiratory illnesses, they all you know, have similar symptoms. So what should a parent do if they suspect RS RSV and while bringing their child to the doctor? What should they say? So, you know, it's very, you know, most it's uh, it's very common for parents to come in concerned, especially again now due to, um, you know, wearing masks and being quarantined. So really kind of the first concern these days is to make sure that their children or even themselves are not suffering from COVID because once again, passing that on potentially to someone else that may be elderly or even a compromise can have more detrimental outcome. But when they come in, you know, at first, we don't necessarily recommend that the moment someone has a running nose that they need to just run to the nearest doctor or emergency room. Uh, but if anybody's, you can see that they're having difficulty breathing, if they're coughing, if their fever is greater than 100, 100.5, those are really reasons for them to be seen and be evaluated by a provider, by a clinical provider to see potentially which one of the respiratory viruses it may be, or even bacteria or other possible, right. you know, once we're talking about conditions above the lung, so many of the symptoms overlap that really takes a good clinician to try to hone down and narrow down what the potential cause of. Yes, and thank you so, I'm so sorry to cut you off. We're just running out of time here, but you have said so much impactful information. So the key thing is thank just you. take your child to the doctor, right? We thank you so much, Absolutely. Dr. Soleimani, you've been so helpful. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. You too.